welcome to Abstract Bass. My name is Ashley and today I will be walking you through a super awesome geode in my style. So stay tuned, support my channel, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get started. We want to make sure that our prep work is done. I actually originally had this one finished and decided I did not like it at all. So it already has the hanging hardware on it. And this line that you see here, I just prepped the back of it with the monster latex, but I do want to let you know that it does have a strong odor. And if you're not wearing a mask, you're probably going to have difficulties working with this particular product. Um, but I don't have issues once it dries and I'm not sure, like I said, I don't, just be careful, know your warnings and your allergies to latex because I know that's a very common allergy. Um, so I just wanted to put that like little warning, serious note there for a second. Okay, now back to awesomeness and super crazy awesome Ashley. But this is my old geode. I sanded it down, that's why it looks all crappy and scratched up. And I am just going to be pouring right over top of this. I sanded it down as much as I possibly could uh, to flatten it out. So you can see there's not really any texture on there anymore. And I'm gonna tape some cups to the back of this and I'm going to make sure that I put this in my curing area flat and level it before I begin my pouring because I have my project workstation, which is right here in front of me, but then I have my curing area, which is over there. So I wanna make sure that I put this where it's going to be curing and make sure that it is leveled over there. I didn't do that with my ocean piece and I talked about that in the video. If you didn't see it, it's right here. If you don't have anything on your wood already, you can use a just normal layer of gesso. Um, that kind of helps seal things in a little bit. And if you don't have any gesso, then you can do a very, very, very thin layer of resin. That can be a little bit more expensive than just a couple layers of gesso. So you play it by your wallet. All right, let's get started with the best part of this video, the geode. Welcome to week three of the Abstract Boss Challenges. This week's challenge is glitter in resin. I chose to make a flat geode, so join in on the fun or just go join the group to support the other artists and vote your favorite pieces. <laughs> to start off, make sure the piece is level. I have made the mistake many times thinking it will all be okay. Most times it wasn't. I am just very stubborn. Uh, so then we can begin. Make sure you have all your colors open and ready before you begin mixing resin. I recommend this for all beginners, especially because your mind will likely not think of everything until the resin is already mixed and poured and then you'll wish you had more time and it just sucks to come across those um, circumstances. If you want to know my tips and tricks for mixing resin, then check out my video here. If you wanna know how to mix any particular type of pigments, then check out my other video here. <laughs> Today I'm working with Crystal Ruby from Patty's Pigments, Cranberry from Ranger Ink, and Copper Metallic Paste from Just Resin. I also have a Caramel Glitter from AC Moore, but I haven't found an alternative yet since they went out of business, so. Uh, sorry about that. I will update you whenever I do find something similar to it because I do think it's a really beautiful glitter. To start this geode, I'm going to just keep pouring my colors in the middle of the wood over and over and over. Because there's still slight texture on my wood, the resin didn't have the perfect outer ring circles. I could have prevented this by pouring a layer of clear resin before beginning, but I chose not to. I just wanted to make sure I threw that out there for you guys to understand if you want your circles to move very well, then go ahead and pour a nice quick clear layer first and then begin your colors. Now that I'm mostly out of all my colors, I have just a little bit left in each. I'm going to tilt and move to create crazy lines and give a lot more movement within this piece. Now it's time to add the glitter and then to utilize the rest of like my pigment paste. I wanna make sure that I'm bringing in the shine to all of these areas. So in case you didn't see my dirty pour video, I wanna remind you that it's not a good idea to pour the glitter resin 
in the middle of the geode in the same fashion as the solid colors. If you do, then the glitter will run throughout all the colors like this geode here. I created this one a long time ago. Um, so if you have not been following me for a while, make sure you go and check it out so that way you can kind of see how everything has progressed. So I am just mixing the glitter in the solid colors. Now that I'm done tilting, I'm going to follow the lines that the tilting created and add some sparkle. I also re-pour some of the solid colors just to bring back out that vibrancy because when you do tilt, it kind of does blend some of the colors a little bit. And you, if you want to have really nice solid lines, then just go ahead and re-pour them. Seeing it from this perspective, I actually loved this geode exactly where it's at. But of course, I see it from a completely different angle when I'm working on it. And I thought it was nowhere close to being done. So I tried to see if any of my unmolded crystal pieces would look good set in the middle of it, but none really fit. So I decided to add some more movement within the largest purple line. And I just utilized a popsicle stick and pulled the resin over the copper, over the purple. And when you pull resin over itself, it gives a really great depth look um, upon curing. And I love that. So that's kind of what I was going for here. But it really took over that purple color. So I did eventually bring some of that back. I was a little upset that it took away too much purple. But to my surprise, it was brought back through curing just a little bit. So I got a lot of depth when it came to the copper and the purple after I found that it was done curing. Now that it's cured, I found some great handles that I decided to use for feet. I don't need all the junk that comes with it for my purposes, so I'm just gonna toss everything else aside. I'm just gonna lay them out where I want them and use a pen to mark where the holes are. I also found some nails that had heads that were small enough to fit in the holes. Then I hammered them into the back of my geode and left them just a little bit hanging over and put super glue in the holes of the handlebars and then put those right on top of the nails. You can also use epoxy as well and that will also be extremely great to secure these to the back of the wood. And that's it. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to join the Facebook group if you haven't already. We are done with two different weeks now. So great stuff ahead. And I'll see you next time.